Good morning and thank you for joining our uh, webinar. Um, this is a recorded webinar, so for those of you watching it later as a recast, good morning or good afternoon or good evening, depending on where you may be. Thank you very much for joining us and for taking the time. My name is Guy Jelly and I am the CEO and one of the co-founders of Project Portfolio Office. And really the webinar today, which is entitled Introduction to PPO, is exactly that. My intention is to introduce you to PPO, give you an overview of the features and functionality that the product supports. I will round off the session by dealing with pricing, as well as discussing some implementation approaches, uh, should you be interested to pursue looking at PPO. Before we get going, some basic housekeeping. You should all be seeing the Project Portfolio Office website, which is on projectportfoliooffice.com. Uh, if you look as part of this webinar, uh, bottom left-hand corner is a little sound icon. So if you want to increase the sound, you can do that. Bottom right-hand corner is a document section. There are three documents that are available there for you to download. These three documents are on the PPA website as well. They are basically the product brochure, the features fact sheet, as well as a technical fact sheet dealing with technical security and integration type stuff. If you've got a question during this webinar, please raise your hand and I'll be able to address it. Um, I can hear you, but unfortunately you guys can only hear me. Next top right hand corner is a full screen button. I would recommend that you press that button. What it will do is expand the webinar or recast onto a full screen and you'll have the full screen available on your screen to watch during this presentation. And then at the end, hopefully not before I'm finished, you're able to click on the exit button. That's the blue little cross and that will then take you immediately out of the webinar. So to get going today, really what I'm going to show you is one of our solutions. Um, PPO has various pre-configured solutions which I'll get to at the end and today the one I'm walking you through is the project management office one. Every user of PPO gets a unique username and password. Um, using the uh, internet they are able to then access PPO and access their specific instance of PPO. Each client has their own instance of PPO, there's no sharing of databases or components, that's for security reasons. So for today's presentation, my name is Barry Lineker. I'm a project office administrator within Acme Limited. And by logging on to PPO, I'm immediately taken to my home page. On the home page, I'm able to access information relating to items assigned to me. In the case of today's presentation, I have a benefit that is assigned to me as I'm the benefit owner. I have a bunch of issues a bunch of risks, as well as some tasks that are assigned to me. So really the intention of the home page was to provide a place where all work assigned to a specific resource is able to access, they're access it, they're able to see it, and based on that I'm able to drill into it. Today's presentation I'm really just going to cover the functionality of PPO, so I'm going to walk through the menu items from left to right. I've started here on the home page, some basic stuff within PPO, PPO has advanced search capability, so in the top right hand corner here under the PPO button, I'm able to actually search items and based on my search results, the PPO will search across the entire database and in this case I've looked for business specification and if it finds any project, document, risk, issue, benefit, employee record, any item assigned to business specification, the system will then pull it up for you. And once the results have been published, in this case 54 results, I'm able to access only items for the last month or documents or those type of things. So anywhere within PPO, the search functionality exists. Being a web-based system, you're able to print from anywhere within the application. So you'll see the print button here in the top right-hand corner, once again under the PPO icon. Support, throughout your use of PPO, you can access the support button, top right-hand corner the little question mark, or by clicking the support icon, and what you're then able to do is access the support portal. Because PPO is offered on a subscription model, users pay a fee per user per month to access the application, and that entitles you to full use of the support portal 24-7 from anywhere you are. 
it knows who I am cleverly enough, so it welcomes me back to the support portal, and from here I'm able to take a tour of PPO, try PPO, access knowledge base, frequently asked questions, register ideal, submit requests. Submitting requests allow the request or call log to be sent to our support team. You're then able to monitor and measure it using the check your existing requests and the support team will then respond to you. We also have links to all our social media sites. So those of you that are Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn users, even YouTube, we strongly recommend you click on those icons. You can click it either from here or from the PPO homepage or the PPO website. And really what that is is just to keep you in touch with us. We publish news as it happens on those social media sites. Things like server maintenance, version upgrades, new features, new functionalities, new frequently asked questions which might have been published, new clients, as well as interesting webinars, events, training and those type of things. The support portal is really a place for the users to access all the information relating to PPO. So if I just quickly drill into the knowledge base for example, users are then able to access the specific sections within PPO. You can obviously search the entire knowledge base if that's your requirement. I'm going to just click on the home page and what the knowledge base articles will give you is a step-by-step -step guide of how the home page works. It will give you detailed screenshots. It will show you functionality and point you to any applicable frequently asked questions as may be the case. So this is the FAQ, this is the knowledge base, sorry, um, referring to the home page and it details specific sections within the home page with these detailed screenshots. I'm just going to close that. The frequently asked question portal is exactly that. It's a portal which allows us to publish frequently asked questions. These are questions that come from the user community and one of the key requirements or one of the key things that may be asked is relating to bandwidth and by searching the frequently asked question portal it will bring up any bandwidth related questions and one of the first ones that comes up is what is the average bandwidth usage of PPO I'm able to then drill into that and really here it is um, a full FAQ relating to the average bandwidth of PPO and you can see there the average page size on PPO is 65 kilobits so from a bandwidth point of view an application that was built to run over the internet Enough about the support portal, you can explore that on your own. Back to PPO, back to the home page. So from the home page, users are, access to do, users are able to access basic functionality like searching and printing. You're able to access the support portal. We publish in the what's new section on PPO functionality as and how version upgrades are done. Being a software as a service vendor allows us to push out multiple releases a year. So we're in the fortunate position to have a scheduled three release a year. Three, we've scheduled three releases a year, uh, basically end of March, end of July, end of November. They could change based on priorities and based on planning, but the intention is to release three versions a year. And then we will obviously do bug fixes and minor patches during the year. That, all that functionality is published on the What's New, so you can access it there. Time entries, PPO allows you the ability to record timesheets. So as a user, for example, Barry Lineker, he would be able to click on the timesheets button and really what that would do is present him with a time screen of all the work that he needs to do. The timesheets work a bit different from a normal timesheet system in that PPO is a project management system with timesheet capabilities. So really it's quite nifty the way in which it works. Barry as a resource would every morning hopefully log on to his homepage and he'd be able to get a full view of the items that are assigned to him. These items will come from numerous projects, so you can see the projects down the left hand side. And let's say for example, Barry was to work on this issue. This issue relates to the cost to income ratio project, so of which Barry is a team member. There's an issue relating to required hardware. Barry spoke to somebody in procurement, so he's now able to update this issue. He will reassign it back to Tracy, who's the project manager. And provide a comment to indicate to Tracy that the hardware should be available next week. 
and submit the issue. By doing that, this issue is updated and sent back to Tracy. And if Barry was to come back to his home page, obviously that item is no longer. And the three issues that he had are now two. And that item has been moved onto Tracy's home page. One last thing, Barry had to review and approve the project charter, which he has now done. So on the fixed administration fee project, he drills into the specific task, which was applicable, edits the task, and provides feedback to the project manager, saying that this has now been done, and would submit the task. Simply by making those two changes, the audit log that sits within PPO, which is really a security mechanism of recording every single thing that a user does on the system, has been updated. And if Barry was to now go back to his timesheets, what the system is clever enough to do is to know that during this week that we're currently in, Barry updated the issue for requiring of hardware on the cost to income ratio project, as well as approving the project charter. Barry is simply able to then book his time on the system. He's able to indicate both of these items as billable. They both are project work. And provide comments in the section. Simply by doing that, Barry is able to update his timesheet. And all of a sudden, the time that Barry has spent will be recorded. You can see the timesheets. You're able to capture times on any item. So we support capturing of times to tasks, risks, and issues. This is maybe a bit different from what you were expecting or used to. But what we found, the reality is that it's not just tasks on the schedule that require time. In most cases, resources are spending significant time on risks and issues, and therefore we allow you to build time to it. You can, within PPO, record non-real projects. So for timesheet purposes, you're able to record time to leave and training and operational work and those type of things as well. Enough about the home page. I think you get the idea. The intention was really just a space for anything assigned to a specific individual. They're able to update the items on their home page, provide feedback to their project managers and project teams, and in that way manage the workload. As a project office administrator, I have functional rights to go and view other people's home pages, and therefore I can, for example, go and have a look at poor Adrian and see that he has a bunch of tasks there at the bottom, 19 of them to be precise, which need to be completed within this next coming week. The security model of PPO works on two levels. The one is functional and the other is data. So from a functional point of view, it tells, it allows users to be able to register projects, update budgets, download documents, add risks, and the functional model you will then determine and allow users that functionality. So some users would be able to register new projects and obviously others would not be able to. On a data level, PPO will then determine your user group, based on your user group, what access you have to what data. So you might well have 100 projects on the system, but a specific project manager will only have access to his projects or a third-party consultant contractor who's working on projects will only have access to the projects in which they're working. So that security model is set up in the administration section. And for today's webinar or presentation, I'm a PPO administrator, so I have full rights and full access across the entire system. The next item that we get to is the life cycle. The life cycle is really a visual representation of the project program, portfolio, or governance framework or methodology that you've adopted. And really our thinking when we built this was to provide a visual representation of this process. Most project offices that we engage with have some sort of methodology. Some of them have a very strict defined methodology and use industry standards like PMBOK or PRINCE2. Others have hybrids or others have their own specific custom built, built methodologies. And really what we wanted to do when we built PPO was to provide a place to make this visual. It was initially put into PPO for education purposes. So we wanted new users in the project office or new project managers to be able to explore the process and understand the process. But now that it's in the system, we're also able to actually manage the governance of the projects based on certain elements. 
These are visual representations. They are built in a process mapping tool of your choice as long as it can generate an SVG file which st stands for Scalar Vector Graphics. We don't have any fancy process mapping tools so we just use Microsoft Visio. We're able to build and publish these and then link them into PPO and create the necessary intelligence. Clients may build these themselves or they may depend on ourselves or one of our implementation partners to do that. And really to build this lifecycle is a one day training course. It's called the PPO lifecycle training and the information about the schedule and the training is available on the PPO website for those of you that are interested. But the way this works is users are able to drill into these items. So let's take for example initiation, a user using the lifecycle on PPO will be able to click and drill into the initiation section and really what that does in this case is it drops you a level lower from the home page into a detailed view of the initiation process. These are configurable as I mentioned, so this is a swim lane based one where it will show the different roles on the project and then each one of these icons is clickable and by clicking on the first step for example, notify stakeholders of the stage approval the system will provide the project management project manager with some guidance and guidelines around what that specific status is about. You can carry on moving through the process. So if I was to click on the next one, for example, and drill into review lessons learned, that would really then provide me with an understanding of the lessons learned. It would provide me a description of that. And because there's a specific report that's applicable, I'll actually be able to click on that report link PPO is clever enough to know where I'm clicking and open up for me the lesson learned report which is a knowledge base of all the lessons learned across all projects and I'm able then to research these lessons learned before I move into my workshop so that I could be aware of previous lessons that have been learned. So as mentioned the intention of the life cycle is to provide a visual representation of this process but as you can see provide users to access to templates and guidelines and reports and if I move through this one, through the approval charter, through the stage gate and off to the end. So really when we were building this, we thought why have a methodology in a document stuck on the server which no one can access or even worse, printed and stuck all the way down the walls but not interactive and not available within the application that you've chosen to use and that's why we put it into the system. These can get fairly complicated so if I was to for example drill into scope management you're able to actually define the specific processes you would like your teams to use around dealing with change management and these can be on a phase level as I illustrated as well as a discipline level or a knowledge area level like this. And for example, if I click on this, you're now able to see the scope management process. Users are able to review and log scope change requests. And a simple click on the link would take the user directly to the place in the system where I'm able to register a scope change. So simple, intuitive, providing guidance and education for your users. Question that's come up while I've been doing this, thank you very much for the question, is can I have multiple methodologies? Yes. PPO does allow you to publish multiple methodologies. The reality is most organizations have multiple methodologies. You may have one of these methodologies where you have a standard methodology, but then a fast track methodology for certain size or type projects. You may also run an enterprise project office across various different project types. And what PPO is then able to do is obviously provide you with a methodology for the different project types and based on the project type to find a different methodology. You're also able to publish product methodologies. So in the case of execution, for example, I would be able to marry that execution to a product methodology. And if I was an IT company, for example, I would be able to publish an applicable SDLC process that says during project execution, we do requirements do analysis, development, deployment, training, testing during the execution phase of the life cycle. So you're able to do those as well. As I mentioned, these are configurable and each client has the ability to build them themselves. If you take one of our pre-configured solutions, then you're able to access these methodologies that are published with those pre-configured solutions yourself. The next screen I'm jumping onto is the project screen. This is really where the majority of work is done within the system. 
I'll mention it a number of times during the webinar, but these screens are all configurable, so you're able to actually decide how you configure these screens yourself. If I was to just quickly look at the registration page for projects, so users with the necessary ability will be able to click on the Add Project button, which is really just the ability to register the project. And really what you can do over there then is register the project. You'll see throughout your use of PPO these gray fields, which are required fields or mandatory, and then the white ones, which are optional. And really what PPO is doing over here is it's therefore allowing us to determine what data we need from the users, in what data format, and whether or not it's required. You'll see PPO supports text fields like these ones here. We'll support calendar controls or date parameters like you see over here on this one. We're able to support tick boxes, numeric fields, drop-down boxes, employee lists, percentages, numbers, all those type of things. All these screens are configurable, so I'll show you a bit later, but you're able to configure and customize this project registration screen in any way you like based on the administration functionality that allows you to configure and modify these. So for the case of today's demonstration, I'm just going to access a existing project. This is our project list over here. Throughout PPO, I'm able to sort and filter and quickly group these. So if, for example, I was looking for specific projects that are in execution, I'm able to very quickly isolate execution projects. And the example that I'm looking for today is this Northern Frontier Marketing project. And I'm able to drill down on it and click on it. PPO is now taking me into what we call the project view page. And really, this is the full set of project-related information that we have about this specific project. And just to give you a brief overview, it's got the basic project information at the top, so I'm able to see that it's Northern Frontier Marketing Project and when and last it was updated. And I've got my basic project information relating to the descriptions, the objectives, the benefits, the required end dates, and those type of things. Give me two seconds quickly. I just want to make one or two changes to the screen to make it a bit more manageable. Okay, I'm drilling down into the history section at the bottom over here, and from here I'm able to then go back to the project information section. Okay, so back to where I was. There's your basic project information. So in this case, I'm carrying information like the description of the project, the overall objectives and benefits, constraints, assumptions, dependencies, and basic project information that was captured during the registration approval of this project. Next is my project status information. I'm able to see that this is an active project in execution. It has priority number one and an overall health of AMBA. And really what that is telling me is that there's some problem on this project. The project health in PPO is typically calculated based on the health indicators that sit below, which I'll get to later. So one of the health indicators I'm going to illustrate to you a bit later is AMBA, and therefore it's pointing out to me that there are some concerns on this project. If I look at progress and actual percentage progress, uh, this project is 31% planned progress, which means I should today be 31% complete. And what the system is telling me is that I'm actually 16% complete. This project, even though it's in execution, also doesn't carry a baseline. So baselining, project progress, percentage, all that type of functionality is then available in PPO. Basic stakeholder information as to who is the project manager, the owner, the sponsor, and those type of things. PPO supports a prioritization and or categorization model. So what you're able to do in the system is categorize projects like I've done over here. So looking at things like the cost, benefit, duration, risk, and impact estimates, PPO will automatically calculate and tell me this is a medium-sized project based on those specific factors. Prioritization in PPO can be done manually, where you as a management team or organization sit together and decide the project priorities and set them in PPO to be one, two, three, four, five. Or they can be derived from a prioritization model, where similar to this example I'm showing you over here, a bunch of questions can be asked, and based on the answers being provided to questions as to what the benefit estimates are and the risks are, or the strategic alignment, or whatever those type of questions are, we're then able to basically determine the priority of the project based on the other priority of the projects within the system. To assist in data take-on and to enable you to manage the environment a bit better, PPO has data quality measurements. 
So in this case, our project is green. And what that really means is that the project manager has updated his comments and health indicators within the last week. And that's a configuration setting that you could change to be week or month or by week or whatever you require. But this just allows us that when we look at the project data to get an indication of whether or not the data quality is, is fair, medium or bad. And in this case, it's all green, so we have no problems with quality. The first section you really get into when you start using PPO is after the project has been registered is the task section. So what you see over here is a visual Gantt view of this specific project. You can see that PPO will support all the different project types, all the different task types, I apologize. So I have my project task at the top and then I have my summary tasks and my milestones and those type of things. PPO supports bi-directional integration to Microsoft Project. So when I imported this project plan, the pop-up that you've seen on your screen now will cover all the data that's available within Microsoft Project that I've pulled in. And that's typically things like the name of the task, the start date, the end date, the duration, the dependencies, whether or not this is a path on the critical path, or this is a task on the critical path, the sort order of the task, all that type of information. PPO has, as mentioned, this bi-directional integration to Microsoft Project. So your resources that are using Microsoft Project to do planning or scheduling are able to continue doing that. And to then import your project plan is a simple matter of finding the project plan on the system, locating it on your browser, and based on that, being importing the project plan. And it will map the fields that you see on the left-hand side in PPO to Microsoft Project on the right-hand side. For purposes of the demo, I'm not going to do this, but a typical project plan takes less than a minute or so to import, and you're able to play with this on your own play pens after today's demonstration. For those clients that don't use Microsoft Project, we have two other options. Option number one is Excel. So you're able to import a task list in Excel. You can actually create the task list in such a way that you have tasks at various levels and different types of tasks, like you see on the example over here, such that you're actually able to generate this interactive Gantt view that you see within PPO. The other alternative is to use the simple add task functionality and either add tasks manually one for one through the system or to use the edit tasks and upload or edit or add a bunch of tasks at the same time. So really full flexibility in terms of how you get your tasks into PPO. When I logged onto PPO earlier, on my homepage was a bunch of tasks and those are the exact tasks that you see over here. So by adding a task on the system, those tasks get automatically added and pulled through onto my home page. So let's, for example, say a new task is added on the system. It's assigned to me, Barry Lineker. The project manager would like me to start this task today, and he'd like me to finish it by the end of the week. He says he's allocated four days for me to do it. Um, he reckons it'll take me 25% of my time. And simply by doing that, a new task is created in the system. PPO's email notification engine, which sits behind PPO, will now generate an email and send it to me automatically and say a new task has been allocated. And if I was to go back to my home page where I was previously as part of our demonstration, that new task is automatically on my home page. There it is at the bottom test hardware configuration. So by updating and providing new tasks on the system, automatically those tasks are emailed and notified to the relevant people, in this case to myself, and there on my home page is that new task which I'm then able to update. So PPO is used actively in the communication and collaboration around work items. We find that environments where the entire project team are using PPO are much more mature, get much more value out of PPO and therefore have greater project success. So PPO really was built to allow a project team to communicate and collaborate and not just as a reporting tool for project managers. That said, we have a number of clients who use it purely as a reporting tool where project managers go into the system and update and provide information to PPO. Okay, so a simple example of how that task was added and then flowed through onto my homepage. Moving down in the functionality is the task section, is the cost section, sorry. PPO has the ability for you to record your project budgets and your spends and your forecasting within the system. You can categorize and split those up. So in this case, I've taken my entire project budget. I've broken it up into line items, which in this case are OPEX and internal cost. And I've also broken it up into years and months. 
You don't have to do this level of configuration. This is typically done by clients who want to do cash flow planning or forecasting around their specific project costs. What you can see over here is the system also allows me to record my budget. So what is the project budget that has been approved, the actuals and the spends that have occurred, the estimate to complete or forecasting if you prefer that terminology, and then PPO will calculate the total of completions and variances and give you a total cost view of your projects. Question coming in, can PPO integration integrate with ERP systems? Yes, PPO has a API or web services that can be called. They're detailed in that technical fact sheet that I spoke about previously under the document section. If you have the necessary skills, you're actually able to push information into PPO or pull information out of PPO using that API yourself. We have in the past integrated to things like SAP, JD Edwards, Oracle, Great Plains, um, uh, Pastel Evolution, those type of products. So yes, PPO can generate that. Obviously, there needs to be some unique identifier, so you will have to carry a project code in PPO, which is similar to the project code in the ERP system, and then you can pull that information automatically. Otherwise, it can be recorded and updated manually by the project managers as and how you need. Next piece of functionality PPO supports is your scope changes. So what we've done over here is we allow project managers to register and record their scope changes in the system. In this case, this is a simple change request. The user can say, what is the name of the change request? What is the description? Why did I need it? Who requested it? There's an impact assessment section where we can determine the impact on time or cost or scope. And then there's approval section as well. To keep today's presentation down to a certain time limit, I'm not going to discuss or show the detailed approval functionality. There are other webinars available for that should you be interested. But PPO allows online approval. So what that means is users are actually able to register their scope changes on the system. The approval functionality on PPO can be activated and those people that need to approve those scope changes will then receive an email. They're able to click on that email, access PPO and approve or decline those scope changes as and how they happen. It makes a much more effective environment. It ensures that sponsors and owners who are typically the people approving these scope changes are more involved in our projects. Um, it does, however, require that those people have access to PPO. And from an approval point of view, PPO supports single or multiple approval. And if you choose multiple approval, you have the option to do approvals in sequence. For example, the project owner would approve, and based on him approving, we would send a request for approval to the sponsor, or out of sequence, where both the owner and sponsor receive approval requests. And once both have approved it, the scope change would be approved. In this case, you can see on my project, I did have a scope change, which was requested on the 20th of April. It has an impact of five days on my schedule and 50,000 rand or dollars or whatever currency setting the system has been set up to support on costs. And it was approved and has been implemented. Risks and issues are really um, visible and active and living within PPO. So what we wanted to do was provide project managers with the ability to raise risks on this project. This is, for example, a lack of sponsorship. You can see the risk is currently assigned to myself, Barry Lineker, and you can see it's got a probability of five, an impact of nine, which gives it an overall rating of 45. And we're then able to use the concept of calculated fields, which is one of the things PPO supports, derive the rating based on the impact and probability, and then calculate the RAG. So you can quite clearly see this is a red high priority RAG. I'm able to edit this item, for example. I can reassign it to Adrian, who's my sponsor, and say, Adrian, as discussed, please take up at Manco. Because Adrian is now involved, I think the impact will be less, and I will then reassign it to Adrian. By doing that, once again, the notification, the email-driven notification engine that sits within PPO will send an email to Jane, who is our project manager on this project. It will also send an email to Adrian. And what you can see at the bottom over here, and you, this is throughout PPO, whether I'm updating a risk or a task or a baseline or a cost or a schedule or a document or whatever it may be, is PPO now creates a history record for me. So I can see that this risk was initially raised by the system administrator at a specific date and point in time and has now been updated by myself, Barry Lineker, at, on the 30th of April. 
because I changed the impact and probability, the traffic light has gone down a little bit, and this item is now a green item in terms of the overall risk list. So really what the risk and issue lists are or logs are within the system is your ability to raise risks and issues. You can assign it to certain people. You can give it categories and classifications. You can give it follow updates. And I'm able to very quickly look at my risk log at the top over here. I'm able to see I have three risks, who they're assigned to, how many days overdue they might be in the case of this one, as well as the age that's applicable to those risks. Issues is at the bottom over here, exactly the same concept as I've shown you for risks. I'm not going to cover it again in the demonstration. The only difference over here is you'll notice, for interest's sake, a little paper clip in the bottom right-hand corner over here, and what that is is an attached document. So whether you're updating a risk or an issue or a cost item or a, or a task, PPO allows you the ability to link documents to that that you can see at the bottom over here. And in this case, for example, there's this issue relating to the value chain components. We've updated the documentation which has been attached, and that documentation in our case is the scope of work and project management plan, which has been updated based on these new value chain components. So when a user is actually viewing the issue list or the issue log, they're able to see that paper clip which then tells them that there is applicable documentation attached to that. It's very useful on issues and risks for mitigation plans. It's useful on milestones to record certificates and sign-offs. It's useful on the costing entity to attach invoices and purchase orders um, throughout the application. Coming back to comments and health indicators, these two sections are used by project managers for reporting in PPO. The health indicators is basically a mechanism for us to review the health indicators of a project. These are configurable, so you can decide what indicators you'd like. In the case of today's example, I'm using benefits, costs, issues, progress, risks, and scope. These items are set up in the system configuration. And really what this does is allow the project manager to, on a weekly basis, go into the system, update these indicators for us, give us a comment, which you can see on the right-hand side, as to what the status of that indicator is, and provide feedback from a reporting point of view. We have the cost of the project, we have the schedule of the project, we have the risks of the project, but this is just the project manager's subjective, objective opinion on these items, telling us where he's worried or concerned and raising problems. PPO is clever enough to marry the current indicator to the previous indicator. So in the case of our example, you can see that costs were, were fine previously, but the project manager is now raising a concern and making it amber. But risks, uh, sorry, issues in scope have got better since the previous update. Last section on the reporting is comments. This is really the project manager's comments that flow through onto his dashboard. So in this case, we ask a bunch of questions like, are there actions required from other projects? Give us a general comment and update on the project. What milestones did you achieve this period? What do you plan to achieve next period? Are you behind? And if so, why? And what do you plan to do about it? And those comments that you see over there, once again, are provided by the project manager and flow through onto the dashboard and reporting, which I'll show you just now. Next section in the system is documents. PPO has its own document management repository. So you're able to upload documents on the system. PPO does not limit the type of documents you can upload, so you can upload any file format, whether it be Word, Excel, PowerPoint, photos, images, um, PDF files, um, SQL scripts, if that's what your requirement is, business requirement specs, there's really no limit. We do have a 8 meg limit on the document size. This is configurable, so clients can change that should they wish. That just ensures that users are aware of the document sizes as they're uploading and moving them onto the system. You're able to record the document, choose the physical file of your, of your PC, determine what type of document it is, and give it a specific status, and then that document is submitted. Once the document's in the system, like you see in the document section over here, you're then able to view a full list of the documents. And in our case, I can see I have the approved project management plan. I have the approved business case. I have a final communication plan. And by clicking on that, I'm actually able to see information around who uploaded this communication plan, when it uploaded it. I'm able to physically download the document simply by clicking on the button. And that document will then download for me. 
and I'm able to, in this case, open this communication plan directly in the system. In this case, it's a Word document, so Word would open for me and show me this, com this communication plan. PPA also has nifty functionality from a document point of view. So I'm able to actually, while this document opens in the background, I'm able to actually email this document to myself by using the email document to me functionality. And what that does is as opposed to waiting for the document to download like I was waiting now, the document will simply be emailed to you in the background and in a couple of seconds it'll pop up in your mailbox and you're able to do it there. The other nice functionality that PPO has is the ability to mail documents to the system. So you can actually email a document to PPO. PPO is then clever enough to actually open and save the document for you in PPO. Enough about the document functionality. Moving through to the next section in the system. This is the benefit log. So PPO has a bunch of what we call standard entities and those are the ones I've covered so far. Costs, issues, risks, scope change, documents, comments. And now what you're getting is a bunch of custom entities. We support six of them. In this case, I've used three. These are configured by the client, so you can define your own logs that you want. There are some pre-configured ones which you can activate, like benefits, lessons, decisions, stakeholders. So any logs that you require additional that the system may not support out of the box, you're then able to activate and configure yourself. In this case, my benefits log, so I'm able to record my project benefits, how much I, what benefits I plan to achieve, have they been achieved, I'm able to measure the status of those benefits. Lessons learned, PPO will allow you to record and store the lessons learned on a project, as well as my decision log at the bottom over here, where I'm able to record my decisions. Once again, in a more mature environment, you are able to workflow these decisions in such a way that you use the approval functionality to actually approve these decisions online. So this is the basic project functionality that a user would be using when they use the system. And if everybody uses the system as designed, then you should be able to, from the project information, download what we call the project managers dashboard, which is this dashboard that's coming up over now, over here. And the project managers dashboard is really a single page, one view, real data of the status of the project. So on one page, this is the status of the project. It covers the basic project information and stakeholders in the top section. It looks at objectives and benefits to remind the users of this report as to what the project objectives and benefits were. It brings in the health indicator section I spoke about earlier, where you're now able to see the specific health indicators on the system. It brings in the project comments, which I'm now able to see over there around the general comments and issues, the milestones that have been achieved this period, and those comments that were provided by the project manager. It brings in a subsection of my schedule, which is applicable and shows me my project is currently slightly behind schedule and will identify specific tasks which are causing that project to fall behind schedule. It will record my project costs. So in this case, my budget, which was recorded of 630,000 Rand, I've already spent 470 and I'm going to overrun this project budget by 25. My benefits, my risks, my issues and my scope changes. So really a full page view of the entire status of the project. These are typically used in status reporting and if you're using them on the system as with most of our dashboards, I'm able to actually drill through onto specific items like this risk and the system would then be clever enough to take you obviously directly to that risk and I'm able to see what is that risk about, when last it was updated, who modified it and those type of things. So really the project section is really just a view, a project manager's dashboard one, sorry, is really just a view of the project status of the project and those will then flow through onto other reports as well. Coming back to PPO, the employee section, really what this is, is a list of all the project resources that are working on the project. PPO allows you the ability to record basic employee information, name, surname, contact number, email address. It allows you project classification information. This is a project manager, for example. This is a manager, sorry, within the project office. It allows you to record capacity information, standard working hours, multiple charge out rates. It also allows you to record basic additional employee information. So from this, I'm able to gain the skills and experience of a project manager or a resource, their specific charge out rates, their standard working hours, 
all those type of things. Your resource pool will be all the resources working in your project environment, whether they are project managers, project administrators, team members, sponsors, owners, consultants, um, clients if you're doing projects on behalf of clients. So any resource that's working on the project. Once the resource is in the employee list, we're able to assign work to him, so issues or him or her, issues, risks, tasks, all those type of things. And the email notification engine is then able to push those events to the resource, even though they may not be a user of the system. So PPO is the concept of employees, which are this resource sheet you see over here, and then users, and users are the subscription-based users that are actually accessing the system. So for example, I'm able to add a team member onto PPO, add them into my employee list, assign a risk or issue to them. They will receive an email from PPO when that risk or issue is assigned to them but they will not log on to the system or have access to the system. They will therefore be given just a simple email to say the following item has been assigned to you and be able to address it. I'm running out of time now, so I'm going to move fairly quickly. Reports and dashboards. PPO has over 60 standard reports and dashboards. These are standard as they are deployed out of the box. You're also able to configure and customize these by logging calls with the support center and adding columns and fields and those type of things to these reports. We're also able to build what we call custom reports, which is a brand new report for a specific client. On the Frequently Asked Question portal, it explains exactly how to do that and templates and those type of things to go about doing that. As an example, just quickly, Reports are tabular and detail driven. They're aimed mainly at project managers and team members. I'm able to group, filter, and sort to these reports as and how I like. I'm going to go back to the Northern Frontier Marketing, which was our example project, and view a report on the system. This is the risk report. So what it is is your risk log. And what the system really does is just go into the risk log for that specific project, bring it up for me. In this case, it's only my single project. And I can see the specific risks for my project see who they're assigned to, see who the owners are, the impacts, the probabilities, those type of things. Depending on what type of report I want, I might want to use different report formats. So if I take a finance data report, for example, which is this one, this is really a report of all the different project data relating to costs, and I can see my total project budgets, how much I'm overspending on each specific project, and it doesn't matter how many reports are configured or built within PPO, there's always this need to get your hands on the raw data. So we support that in what we call a data sheet view. And really what that is, is an Excel dump of all the data into a simple Excel file, which users are then able to access directly by using the system. Okay. So just moving past all these Microsoft security issues. And there is my Excel view of this data available on the system. Okay, I don't know why I'm getting those error messages. Apologies for that. What you'll also see is a PDF view. So if I was, for example, to take the lesson learned report and group it by the project, I'm able to access this view directly in PDF. So this is commonly used in an environment where you want to publish reports out of PPO and send them to your project teams or sponsors or owners. And really just by clicking that PDF view, the PDF report will open and allow you to automatically see those reports in PDF view. So once again, there's my PDF report that's been opened for me. And I'm able to just open it up in a PDF view. And there's my lesson learned report in the PDF view. Okay, so really, as I mentioned, the reports are tabular, they're detail-driven, I'm just going to close these ones off, that are available for project managers, they're really able to access this information in various different formats, and you can group and filter and do those type of things that you want for the projects. We go fairly far in terms of the reports, there's specific timesheet reports, planning reports, costing reports, scope change reports, if I look at projects, for example, because of the governance element that PPO supports, I'm able to actually look at a portfolio governance report. So if I was to group it by stage as an example, what this does is it interrogates the total status of all the projects in my portfolio. It measures the current status of governance within those different projects. 
and you can see I've grouped this by stage. So there are my projects in my different stages and if I was to take my Northern Frontier Marketing project for example, I can see its governance is red and by drilling into that, what it's able to do is show me which elements are not aligned to my governance and this is configurable and set up by the client for themselves and I can see for example my project is in execution yet it never had an approved project charter in the initiation phase and that's why my project is red. It did have a business case, a project management plan and a schedule and I'm able to actually drill onto those and go directly into that document and be able to open it. So those of you that are doing project audits or project reviews or doing project quality checks, this tool will dramatically reduce the time and the effort spent in doing that by ensuring that the user community uses the tool correctly and able to get these online audit reports fairly simply and access detailed documentation underneath that. Moving into the dashboarding section, this is really the visual views of the system. So I'm able to start on simple one-liners like this. I'm going to only look at my non-administration projects. I'm going to group it by priority, for example, and I'm able to get a portfolio view. For clients that do active portfolio uh, review committees or project management team meetings or those type of things, this is a view that you would use fairly typically in those. It lists all the different projects, the priority, the project manager, looks at health and spends and progresses, and you can see in this case, unfortunately, we look fairly far behind budget across, uh, fairly far behind schedule on our entire portfolio, and I'm able to then drill through, for example, onto this project, which is problematic and then get back to that project manager's dashboard that I showed you previously, which is the one page of view of this project, and I'm able to interrogate and see what the specific problems are on that specific project. These dashboards are once again configurable as well, so I can take a portfolio dashboard, for example, I can group it by stage, look at only the non-administration projects that filter out the leave and train and those type of things. And what this portfolio dashboard gives me is a visual representation of the entire project portfolio. It looks at all the different elements that I've showed you in terms of the health indicators and the priorities and the costs and the budgets and those type of things. And it gives you a visual view like this. All the graphs and charts that you see in PPO are images, so you're able to just right click and save those images into PowerPoints or Excel or Word or other formats as it may be required. But what this portfolio view tells me is it looks at the different health indicators and shows me where my exposure is and it looks to me as though progress and scope are, pro are items that are problematic. But in most cases I have a 62% portfolio health which is green, which is something that I would be comfortable to live with. Portfolio health and timelines, what these graphs are showing me really is what my portfolio looks like based on cost and, and time. So if I take the graph at the top, my zero line is over here where my mouse is pointing over there. And what it's showing me is all the projects on the left hand side of this line are behind schedule, projects on the line are on schedule and I have one project that's ahead of schedule. The size of the bubble is the, is, is the budget. So this green project over here is project number three, which is my MIS reporting project, which has a 900,000 Rand budget. It's slightly behind schedule and that's probably why it's still green, but you can see these projects on the very left hand side are projects number two, five and six, which is my product launch, my compliance and my cash flow boost project are falling way behind schedule and our priority projects number five, six and nine on my portfolio currently. Timeline report. What this is doing is showing me my timeline and showing me where my projects are currently, where milestones were achieved on the project, and you can quite clearly see my Northern Frontier Marketing project and other projects here when they're going to be falling off the portfolio list. Let's take, for example, this product launch over here. You can see come the end of July, that project is coming to an end. Moving down a bit further, Progress on the left hand side, so all the red are projects that are falling behind schedule and remember our one green project I showed you above in terms of the uh, progress ahead of schedule and on the right hand side the spend, so projects that are progressing quicker than what they spend and you can see two projects that are problematic from a red point of view. When I extracted this dashboard I grouped it by stage, so what the last one is showing me is my portfolio of projects per stage and you can see I have six projects in execution, 
two in planning, two in initiation, and I'm spending 62% of my total budget in execution. So you're able to extract this dashboard, group it by client, by department, by type, by division, by project manager, and you're then able to get these specific reports and dashboards based on those ones. There's a bunch of dashboards and reports in the system focusing on various elements. If you're a project office manager viewing this recast uh, post this, this webinar, you're able to look at things like portfolio health, which will give you a one-liner indication of the specific health of projects. You're able to look at specific resource capacity plan information or whatever it is that you want to see within these specific projects. As I mentioned, these dashboards are configurable. So I'm able to configure the dashboard as and how I like, and I'm able to access specific information relating to either costs or benefits or the entire portfolio. My browser seems to be hanging, so give it a second or two and we'll open it up now. And then the last section in the system that I'm going to briefly touch is on the administration section. Really what that is, is your ability to administer the system, set up the data fields, set up the specific email events and business rules, define the public holidays for resource capacity planning purposes, and all those specific items are covered in administration. Once again, administration is a one-day training course, so users are able to attend a one-day training course and learn to administer the entire system. It's not a technical requirement to administer PPO, so typically it's something that is done by project office administrators or those type of people to administer and set up PPO. It does not require technical resources to be able to do that. Okay, sorry, apologies for this while my browser is busy loading. Any other questions at this stage while I'm coming in? Yes, common question coming in there. Okay, I've got that one. Any other ones? Okay, so the question was, how do I subscribe to PPO? and what termination and contract periods are applicable. So PPO is a pure software as a service based application. You're able to subscribe to PPO directly from the Project Portfolio Office website. There's a buy button which you're able to click and access from there. When you subscribe to PPO, you can manage your subscriptions or your users yourself via the administration module of PPO, which now seems to be coming back to life. So through the administration section. In this case, I'm using an evaluation instance, so I'm able to buy PPO directly from here or from the PPO website. But once you've bought PPO, you're able to manage your subscriptions using that same button and determine how many users you have. There is no long-term contract with PPO, so you're simply able to access PPO and start using it. There's a 90-day termination period that should you not be happy with the service or should PPA not meet your requirements, you're able to terminate within 90 days. You can extract all your data using the data sheet views and move off the system in that termination period. There's no long-term commitment. The minimum subscription that is sold is five users, so you have to maintain a subscription base of five. This is the basic administration functionality, coming back to that, where I'm able to define users and user groups and custom lists and public holidays. I'm not going to spend too much time in terms of this. Once again, there are other webinars aimed specifically at project office administrator type people around this functionality. Last dashboard I wanted to show you before my system is the portfolio health. This is a typical dashboard used by the project office managers. Apologies, I'm just going to group this by stage. So project office managers using PPO are typically using this dashboard um, to monitor the health of the project. It once again brings in that governance indicator I illustrated to you previously, and you're able to quickly see which items, whether it's benefit, cost, progress, risk, scope, has items, has concerns, the red, amber, greens, and as I mentioned, you're able to drill through down into these. Resource capacity planning, there are specific sessions around that. It's a very detailed, complex requirement. But PPO has all the tasks in the system, has all the resources. We know which resources are allocated to which projects. And I'm able to then get a resource capacity view across my entire set of projects. What this view is telling me is that my capacity or my planned, planned resource capacity in February was non-existent. It's ramped up fairly dramatically. I'm currently using 62% planned capacity which was a ramp up from 21% in the previous month 
but you can see it drops significantly and come June, July, for example, in this case, there is no planned work. I've grouped this dashboard when I pulled it by resource, so I'm able to actually see the specific employees and you can actually go and see which resources are over allocated, in this case, Harry, Barry, Peter, Evelyn and Stephen are over allocated. Okay, so I've well overrun my time. Apologies for that. Thank you for those of you, or most of you that have stuck around during this presentation. Um, as I said, the dashboards that cover all the different elements, so you can go and explore those on your own. Those of you are asking, how do I get to see PPO? The easiest way to do that is really to go back to the Project Portfolio Office website, which I've now got open over here on the screen. On the home page of PPO is a Try PPO button at the bottom over here. It's an automated process. You simply click on the Try PPO button over here. It will open up a page for you, fill out the information, basic information, reserve your URL, so the name of the instance that you would like to use, and we recommend you use something that's applicable to your company. Choose one of the different project types that we have. So we have various solutions, a project management office solution and a professional service solution. By clicking on this little button over here, you'll get more information as to what those configurations do and what they're aimed to do. And please check out for this because we will be adding new ones shortly. Um, register your free 30-day evaluation instance. As mentioned, it's a full working version of PPO. You're able to do all the functionality I showed you today. If you follow the social media sites, we will publish there as soon as new uh, pre-configured versions are available. There was a question about pricing. Thank you very much for holding on and giving me a bit of time to get to it. The pricing of PPO is available and published on the website. If you go to the PPO website, in the bottom right hand corner is a pricing button. If I click on that, it takes me to the pricing page. And really, PPO is a pure subscription based model. So as I mentioned, we have a minimum subscription of five. And what you're able to see over here is the cost for five subscriptions on a monthly basis. In this case, it's 1,725 Rand. PPO works on a tiered pricing model. So the more users you have, the cheaper the price per user becomes. What's included in that subscription is use of the system, telephonic and email support, logon access to the support center, all version upgrades, major and minor, as well as unlimited support calls. We don't charge you for new versions. Being a subscription-based model, as long as you are paying the subscription fees, you're then able to access and get the latest version of PPO as in how you use it. I promised you some implementation approaches. Back on the PPO website is the solution section. This comes back to what I spoke about previously. Currently, we have these configurations available. You're able to access the configurations and see which one is most applicable to your business. Really, the easiest way to try it, PPO is go onto the PPO website, click on the Try PPO button. You will get your own instance of PPO. And when you log into that specific instance, like I'm doing now, you will be presented with a bunch of setup steps for that instance. In this case, I have 23 steps in this pre-configured instance. It will take you about two hours maximum to get through these setup steps. But what the setup steps really allow you to do is set up and configure PPO specifically for your requirements. It covers things like branding up front that you put your own logo on it and your own color skins. It goes all the way through in terms of setting up your departments and your job titles and your employees and your project types and portfolios. You actually manage your subscriptions. You register your first project, you import project plans, costs, health indicators, comments. At step number 20, you'll actually extract your first dashboard of the system, and then you're able to understand how to get support and close out the setup project. As I mentioned, these steps are going to take you 20 minutes, uh, sorry, two hours maximum. Um, go onto the PPO website, click on the Try PPO button, get your own evaluation instance of PPO, log on to it, Spend the two hours, it will set up the system for you, and there is absolutely no reason after that why you're not able to start using PPO. Good luck. Please contact us. Let us know how you're progressing. For those of you on the webinar today, a quick survey, which I'd just like you to do for us quickly, please. Um, and for those of you that are leaving us or that are joining us as part of a recast, you're also able to complete that questionnaire for us.
Thank you very much for your time. I do appreciate it. Um, if there's any questions, please feel free to contact us. The contact information for PPO is on the Project Portfolio Office website, uh, phone number as well as the support center. The easiest way to get support is also via your PPO instance to access the support button and be able to update the support center and ask questions directly from there. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. And I look forward to speaking to you in the future.